My name is Greg. Um, I haven't met you, Ama, but um, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Anyhow, um, Amy shared some of the documents um, from your trip to Sierra Leone, um, as well as some of the photographs and a lot of the work. And we've chatted about that, um, about the possibilities of mobile learning. And from what I understand from the documents, the real importance of getting um, training and in terms of the hospitality industries as well as obviously some of the science and math for the petroleum industry but from what I can really tell um, just even basic education and such things is um, health care and particularly the dental care um, frankly that horrified me and scared me to a level that I haven't had for a while considering how reliant I am on dental care anyhow um, I've been brainstorming about some possibilities. None of these are fixed, none of these are set, but I wanted to throw out a variety of um, things that I had thought about in terms of delivering content. I do not know anything about the current IT um, infrastructure, about the mobile infrastructure, um, the current telephone switch system. I don't know how stable the power is. What I'm assuming based on um, third world conditions is that the infrastructure and the services are intermittent and that um, there are probably one or several um, international corporations primarily European I suspect that either own or are managing um, the cellular and the mobile services um, I could be way off but that's what I'm assuming and I also do not know what kind of mobile phones or smartphones the average citizen can afford Amy mentioned that <clears throat> when speaking with um, some of the girls that were working the street um, that they all had mobile devices. I don't know if these devices have internet access or if they are simply um, telephone um, for the local system such as just simple basic um, telephone access. Based on these different figures, based on these different limitations um, I had an array of ideas and these may be completely silly and they may be worth throwing out and ignoring or it may be a you know an option that's viable depending on the funding but in if they have mobile phones that means they have the ability to both most likely send and receive text messages and send and receive images this means that it's it may be possible to develop vocabulary lessons or even having an image where there's an audio file attached and that gets sent to the phone or the user or the student can call um, or send a text message to a specific number if they want to say get a two-minute lesson and then gets called you know they get called back as a student there's an automated system which will call them back or will send a text message back to them or will send an image um, back to them that's a possibility um, if they're if they have phones that can access the web that makes a whole other slew of options available even if it's extremely basic websites or websites that are hosted on servers which are within Sierra Leone so that you don't have to worry about the international connections um, the primary use of the phone though I think is has options if we move back in the US if we think about the 1980s or even the 1990s where if you have a phone and you have a unique user ID and you have a pin so I call up a number I enter in my ID I enter in my pin then I could move to an educational menu and what we what might be possible at least for people who can hear is to set up using one or several of the different languages which um, are primary in Sierra Leone a menu of different topics for essential vocabulary building so if you wanted to learn English for hospitality or English for food service or English for tour guide directions then these would be listed and from that menu an individual could choose oh, okay I want to learn you know hospitality so they hit 14 or 12 and then they could move through and progress through different short lessons so there might be a total of 15 minutes of curriculum comprised of 15 to 22 to 3 minute lessons 
But what I'm thinking is, is that with a decent phone system and you may have to bring the technology in or you may have to get some programming done, is that if you have a decent enough tracking system and a decent enough phone system, it will automatically track where the student stopped because based on their user ID and based on their PIN. So that let's say I'm riding the bus, I'm listening to how to um, you know develop my vocabulary about table settings or like fork, knife, spoon, something like that. If the phone call gets interrupted, I can hang up and then I can call back and it will start me back on that lesson. This does not require image, this does not require web access, this does not require Wi-Fi, and I don't think that those um, phone systems are necessarily too expensive and those are in part being you know I, th I think phased out I am not a telephonic guy I do not have all the technical a a expertise and background but it strikes me that that may be a way to using the telephone to provide an automated menu with automated lessons that track individual users and users can hang up at any time and call back and do um, their learning or education. I think one of the key elements here though is making sure that that material or that information and those lessons etc don't cost any fee for the cell phone so that the users don't have to pay for this and there may be a way to possibly get a petroleum company or the embassy or somebody to fund and sponsor or even working with the embassy and working with um, the the mobile provider that when people call up this number for English lessons or for language lessons or what have you that there would be no cost um, so that is the root core with basic phones you can only call up etc one other thing that's useful to be aware of and you probably know this already maybe you don't is that there are a fair number of devices currently being developed um, primarily for recreational campers and outdoor people or people that are traveling you know in third world countries as first world visitors and I, I recognize and I apologize for the the class and the colon you know the colonization based terminology but I'm not sure what else to what other terms to use in the developing world so when people from the developed world move over to the developing world they often have these technologies some of these include solar collectors which can charge up smart devices other things include using um, you, you can charge up through a USB by boiling water and I know because a friend of mine actually bought one there's something that you put in the boiling water the boiling water heats up and it charges your mobile device what might be possible with that kind of um, technology is that if you have a decent and solid enough mobile device ie one that can provide a Wi-Fi signal or a network to other users in the middle of nowhere where there is no power and there is no Wi-Fi signal as long as you have either solar or hot water you could start up and power and support a device that could act as a server that server or that device could host multiple programs and then other smaller devices like the one laptop per child that rely on a Wi-Fi signal could operate and connect to that one device so rather than having or trying to connect to the World Wide Web which might require serious infrastructure money or power instead what you may be able to do is to create autonomous local zones where as long as you have one device with the gear that can act as the host for a Wi-Fi signal it may be able to handle four to eight different devices within the specific context of deafblind schools or deaf schools or blind schools the potential that I see is that if these area if these sites are very um, distant or located from an array of other places we can provide several things to them with that one device that's acting as a host with the Wi-Fi signals to support all the other devices that can have who knows how many libraries of in terms of 
different textual files, but also potentially different audio files and maybe even video files. The video files may, be not, may not be worth it in terms of the disk, the disk space. On top of that, you have between four to eight people who could start training and using and developing their computer-based skills. And one area that I was thinking of, and, and you probably have already thought of this, is that at least in terms of some of the people with vision impairments or who are blind, that if they were able to develop their English skills um, to a certain point of sophistication, that they may be then employable in terms of translating or working with tourists or at least translating documents or helping to tutor or train other citizens within Sierra Leone or even that some of the vision impaired could be hired as tutors as part of a program to teach English to the local population so it's simultaneously education and employment. Anyhow, I'm throwing out a bunch of different ideas but the thing that I tried to keep in mind is, one, what is the minimal, lowest technology and financial requirements possible? And two, is it possible to deliver self-sustaining, self-supporting mobile technology and devices to traditionally overlooked or ignored groups in rural areas in such a way that they don't become a target but instead they develop as an asset and it does not require regular outside support. Instead, they could sustain themselves. These devices would hopefully provide, you know, if we're looking at the Wi-Fi device hosting or working with six to eight smaller laptops along the lines of one laptop per child, that could ideally serve between four to eight people or if you have multiple users on each device, somewhere between 20 to 40 people depending on how rugged the conditions are and how way they survive and the security of the environment, that kind of training could last for probably three to five years and that may be attainable at an extremely low cost somewhere depending, I'm just guessing here, between 800 to $4,000. And I'm thinking that focusing on local autonomous technology centers that do not cost a lot of money and therefore they don't require massive donors but then they also do not make the schools or the learners targets to other people that might want to steal the technology um, or to take it um, that's that strikes me as a good possibility the other main approach is using just old-fashioned 1-800 number telephone menu for English lesson delivery. It's really cheesy, but for some reason I thought it was worth sharing. And then the final part that I think may be viable, and this may be ridiculous and absurd, but how much radio is currently used in Sierra Leone? I know that in the U.S. at least our radio listeners have been dying in terms of they're going to, you know, online iPods etc if radio is still an open a relatively open forum in Sierra Leone where a lot of people listen that may be a way to set up or automate some educational programming from a variety of different authoritative sources and take existing curriculum as long as we have permission and set up something where there's an automated broadcast which is happening I don't know if the population would be interested or if that would be seen as colonizing or if that would be seen as irrelevant, but that may be a way to use existing technology so it doesn't require any additional investment from the population in order to improve their skill sets and improve their skill base. I think one of the tricks, though, would be making sure that this is of any interest to the locals and making sure that they actually want the material and would use the material. I've gone on for about 15 minutes. I apologize for the length, but I wanted to introduce myself, say hi, I'm GZ, um, you know, guns up. That's weird to do on the uh, West Coast out here, but I graduated from tech. 
I wanted to share some ideas that I've been spitballing and m none of them may be viable, but I'm open to pretty much anything. All right. Pleasure to meet you. Um, talk to you later. Hope you're well.